and welcome again to another edition of BFR Ministry, Bible Facts Revealed. We are an extension of Absolute Bible Truth Atlanta, where Brother Joshua and Brother Big Baby are the teachers there, along with assistant pastors Brother Antoine and Brother LeVar. I'm Brother David, your teacher for today, and reading for me as usual is Sister Teresa. How are you? And our motto here at BFR Ministry is, if they can't prove it, don't you believe it? Being an extension of absolute Bible truth, we are going to do lessons for you that you're going to really, really enjoy, hopefully, and that's what we wish all the time. We try to teach you things that the Lord has shown, showed us, and so we're going to get started by giving you the title of tonight's class. And the name of our class today is Israel's Invasion of the Promised Land. Once again, the title of our class today is Israel's Invasion of the Promised Land. And we decided to do this class for several reasons. Uh, one main reason being is that uh, in my, my uh, uh, travels in terms of how long we, my wife and I have been in the Word of God for many, many years, sometimes you reach highs and lows in this thing and we kind of come to a low, a low point and just didn't want to deal with, with the Word of God anymore to be honest with you. And, uh, kind of sort of just set back uh, off the front lines because we had been on the front line from the day we understood that the Word of God was what it was and, and we began to do certain things. We had a, a singing ministry that we, we uh, were very much involved in for, for many, many years. So uh, we go we run into this lull and we just decided just say hey, we couldn't deal with the Word of God no more. But God and in His infinite wisdom, thank God, uh, drop something on me within this uh, time period that we were so down and out. Uh, I had asked a question uh, when I was a part of another congregation. Uh, I had asked a question to several people about uh, certain things in the Bible and one of the main questions brings about this lesson here that we're going to teach you today. Uh, it was 17 years in terms of me getting an answer. I asked about this particular entity in the Bible and got no answer. So some 17 years after that, and actually it was longer than that, uh, God dropped this information on me and it kind of blew me completely out of the water when he laid it out in front of me and I was just overwhelmed with it. And so this is why we're going to teach you this lesson. And it, and it starts with a very simple question. Uh, when you look at uh, the nation of Israel, and many people say that they are related to those people that call themselves Israelites in the Bible, and whether that's true or not, I'll let y'all argue about that. I'm not. I'm just making a point. Uh, you have to ask yourself, and that was, this was my, one of my questions, who were the people or the inhabitants of the land of Canaan that the nation of Israel was sent in there by God to boot out? That was their job. And I'm going to tell you something else about the nation of Israel, brothers and sisters. The nation of Israel was, they were symbolic of the flood. God cleansed the world by way of the flood waters, brothers and sisters, of sinners and sin. And Israel was symbolic of those flood waters. They were sent into the promised land, the land of God. And if you do uh, your research and you look at the boundaries of where the promised land was, we're talking Garden of Eden. That's what we're talking about here, but that's another lesson in itself. But they were sent in there to, to, to get rid of the inhabitants that polluted God's promised land and get them out of there. Now, I always ask myself, who, who were these people? Hmm. We said Canaanites, the Parasites, and the the uh, uh, Hivites, Hittites, and Jebusites, and all these people. And I, I, I said there were some other things that happened, and it just made me curious. Well, then why were the ten spies that Moses got together and sent into the land of the twelve, the ten, were terrified? And I'm saying, now, how can these people be terrified of other people? 
it just never, you know, just never said. So, but nobody can answer my question. And at that time, I didn't pursue uh, looking at this thing. But as I said, in, in my role, after so many years, uh, past 17 years, uh, and I got really downtrodden, the Lord dropped this information on me and it totally turned me around and rejuvenated me with respect to trying to understand his word. And I started searching and researching again. And, and, and the very first lesson that I taught uh, as an uh, absolute Bible truth member was this lesson I'm getting ready to teach tonight. So I'm very honored to be able to bring you this information. And I'm going to bring it to you a different way and in more than one part because uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different because I think this way will kind of give you some insight as to what my question really points to. Who were these people and why were these 10 spies so terrified? And when they gave the evil report, the whole nation of Israel trembled. Trim got scared and, and wanted to bag out this thing. <clears throat> they didn't want to uh, attack the land and the Lord commanded them. And you know what? They knew that the Lord was with them. It's no way they could have lost with that kind of faith. No way. And that's the kind of faith that, faith that Caleb showed and Joshua. But everybody's got to have it. Got to be on one accord or the Lord ain't working with you. So he then made Israel wander in the wilderness 40 years and they came back that fourth generation is what came back and they began to take the land as the Lord commanded them. After that old generation of those non-believers died out, he killed them all in the wilderness. Anyway, I'm going to show you who these nations were or these people were or these inhabitants of the promised land were. And I think it's going to be astonishing. And again, uh, I think you're going to be just like I was. I was completely floored and blown away when the Lord revealed this to me. And since then, I, I know uh, Joshua has taught on this and a few people uh, that we don't know, I've seen uh, on YouTube, uh, people try to get into it a little bit and some other people are really extensively into it, Gentiles for, for one, really into it. And, um, and it's a beautiful thing when you understand what you're reading and you believe the Word of God. And these people who teach great lessons on this topic, they believe what's written in the Bible and they teach what's written in the Bible and they go out, research, and they tie it in and they connect it to the Word of God and it is connected and it lets you know what you're looking at and been looking at all the time. But let's get into this lesson and see what it is that frightened those spies and the whole nation of Israel. And I'm going to let you know one last thing before we get into this lesson. The inhabitants of the land, brothers and sisters, though they are all dead because the floodwaters killed all of them, whoever these inhabitants were, the, the, it killed everything wicked on the planet back then, and only people survived and animals survived were those on the ark. You can read this. So, but I'm going to let you know something. All of those wicked people those rulers back there in the days of Noah, they affect my life, your life, your children's life, your loved ones' lives, your relatives to this very day. And you don't have a clue how. And that's really not good because the Bible lets you know how. But you're not paying attention because... People really think this is an irrelevant subject. It don't mean nothing. So that's why nobody teaches about it. But we're going to teach about it a little bit tonight. And this is part one of our class tonight. Israel's Invasion of the Promised Land, part one. And we're going to get started in Numbers 13. And we're going to start at verse 1 and 2. And then we're going to skip to 16. And then we're going to read 18 to the 22. And we're going to take a look at what these spies saw and determine what frightened them to the point that they lost all of their courage. They didn't believe God was with them anymore and they was just too scared to do anything. And they rebelled against God. They, they, they turned around and kicked his commandment to the curb and would not fight. And then they tried to fight, but he didn't want them to fight, and they got, got their behinds with. But let's get into a little bit of this. And, and, and again, brothers and sisters, if you're sent into a land uh, to fight for this land, to take it and make it your home, 
You cannot do that when somebody else is living on it unless you go in there and check them out to see what's strong about them, what's weak about them, and everything. Like, so Israel got spies together, went in there, and they searched the land out for 40 days, and they came back with this support because they had saw the weak points of the land, of the, of the nations that were there, the cities and whatnot, what was the strongest point about it, what was the weakest thing about it, if the land had trees, if it had uh, uh, food, was it, could it grow food and so forth. And we're going to take a look at all of this, but keep in mind, we're going to look at these people real, real close. We're going to take a closer look at the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. And I think you're going to be amazed. And they're all over the Bible in the Old Testament. Anyway, let's get started in Numbers 13, verse 1. When you get there, Sister Teresa, start reading. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, mm -hmm. Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan. That they may spot the land of Canaan. Okay, go ahead. Which I give unto the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers shall ye see. Send a man. So they sent one man out of each tribe to represent each tribe. And whatever he saw, this is the report. Whatever they saw, they were supposed to bring it back. And Moses, of course, was surrounded by the elders and they would give this report to everybody. They would know. So keep continuing to read. Everyone a ruler among them. And all of them were rulers among their tribes. Verse 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And if you read this chapter, you can read all those other names, but I didn't put all that in there. I'm just going to read one of them. Go ahead. And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Joshua. That's who we're talking about, Joshua here. The son of Nun, Oshia. Same thing. Okay? And now skip down to verse 8. So Joshua was one of the leaders, mm -hmm. okay, of these spies, of, of this tribe, and he was part of the spies. He was one of the twelve. Skip down to verse 18. We're going to read to the 20. Continue this. And see the land, what it is. Mm -hmm. And the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, strong or few weak. or many. Strong or weak, few or many. I, I, we, we need to know this, uh, Israel, because we're going to attack these people, and we got to know what we got to do to deal with because if they're strong, we want to know how to attack them. So this is what this report they was bringing back to Moses. Go ahead. And what the land is that they dwell in, mm -hmm. whether it be good or bad. Whether the land grows food and that type of stuff like that, it was good land or bad land. Go ahead. And what cities they be that they dwell in, mm -hmm. whether in tents or in strongholds. And strongholds means fortified, <laughs> fenced in cities, mm -hmm. and like a castle or fortress. Mm -hmm. That's what he means when he says strongholds, you know? Go ahead. And what the land is, mm -hmm. whether it be fat or lean, mm -hmm. whether there be wood therein trees, or not. Trees to cut down for wood to build things. Go ahead. And be ye of good courage. Now, wait a minute. Why would he tell them that? Hmm. Be ye, O Israel, of good courage. It was the reason the Lord told them that via Moses. Hey, See, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. Apparently, something was in this land that was going to frighten them. Mm -hmm. I wonder what it was. Let's keep reading. And bring of the fruit of the land. Mm -hmm. Now the time was the time of the first ripe, first ripe grapes. Mm -hmm. So many, so they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Rahab. Go ahead. A man come, as men, as men come to Rah uh -huh. Ramah. And they ascended by the south Go ahead. and came unto Heb Hebron, where a hymen, she Shishai, and Talmiah, the son of Anak, the children, the children of Anak, were. What is now? They saw some people in 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 the city Hebron. Mm -hmm. uh, it was these these three uh, uh, people here. Uh, Amaya, uh, uh, either Hyman, uh, Shisha, Shishai, and Talmia. Uh, 
and some people said tall ma mm -hmm. uh, but you can pronounce it any way you want these are the three people they saw and they were the children of Anak who in the world is Anak okay and he was in the land inhabiting the land these were the people they were spying out continue read that now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt and yeah, and, well, that means Israel didn't build this city, did they? Mm -hmm. But built by who, brothers and sisters? Built by who? Who built this Hebron? All right, what we're going to do is take a historical look at this city. Because I want to give you its original name. And it's in the Bible, too. But right here, you can't read its original name. So I'm going to go to a book that it took me uh, uh, about... Three years I almost find this book. I found it in about three years. I looked for it and searched for it. I heard a brother mention this book. And uh, it's a book by uh, uh, Stephen Quayle. It's a historical book. And 99% of the information in it, brothers and sisters, is totally accurate to the T. It lines up with the scriptures 100%. But you know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'll give you 1% and just say 99%. Because most people say, ain't nothing perfect. Okay, I'll give you 99% of the information in this book is accurate. I mean to the letter, to the T. <clears throat> in any case, we're going to go into this book. Genesis 6 Giants, Master Builders of Prehistoric and Ancient Civilizations. Because I want to see who built this city. It just said in the book that Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Mm hmm and this is ancient Egypt, way before Israel and all that, these cities were built. So we're going to see when this, we're going to go into this book, Genesis 6, Giants, Masters, Master Builders of Prehistoric and Ancient Civiliz Civilizations, page 445. And we're going to read about Hebron. And it says something else. Hebron's giants. Mm. Are they the ones that built this city? We're going to find out. And when you get there, start reading, start reading. This is what it says. Hebron's giants. We're reading about the city Hebron. Hebron's giants called Kiriath Arba okay. until, until Caleb took it. Hebron served as the capital city. As what? The capital city. The capital city of who? Of the numerous Anakim giants. Of who? Anakim giants. The Anakim giants. They are the progenitor, they are the children of the, their progenitor, which is Arba. This city, Hebron, and we just read his its original name was named after the progenitor of these children of Anak, who Israel saw. Mm -hmm. The three uh descendants of them. Okay? Go ahead, keep on. Who lived in Canaan particularly in the south southern part. Okay, wait a minute. We read that in the book where they mm -hmm. started a search out the land. They went to the southern part of the land, and this is confirming that, is it not? Correct. Go ahead. At the time of Israel's invasion. At the time of Israel's what? Invasion. This is why we entitled, entitled this class in Invasion, Israel's invasion of the promised land. That's exactly what it was, brothers and sisters. An, in, an in invasion. Okay? And this, looking at this definition, it's just confirming what we had said. And so this was at the time of Israel's invasion. Continue. The Anakim giants divided into three clans. Mm -hmm. They were ruled from Hebron by... Ahiman, mm -hmm. Shishai, and Talmai, descendants of Arba. These are the giants. So Israel saw giants then. Mm -hmm. These were the three giants they saw when they spied out the land, brothers and sisters. Because the first time we take a look at the word giant, we can find it in Genesis 6. And it's not just there. You have to look from Genesis 6 on, and you can read it in every book from Genesis 6 on up. You can read about these giants. But you know what? Nobody ever did a lesson on these giants to show me and others where they came from. Uh, 
That's who Israel had to fight to take the land, all of the promised land, because they inhabited, and we're going to show you this thoroughly in part two, they inhabited the entire land of Canaan and the surrounding land in terms of what was just outside of Canaan. Well, at least the teachers that we were acquainted with didn't do No, they did not. <laughs> and so we were like in the dark, and this was one of my, this question burned at my heart. I, I wanted to know, and I started, and the Lord dropped all this information on me about this, and since then I've, I've, I've uh, researched it, and it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's really amazing information. But these three giants were descendants of Arabah. This was the giant who gave birth to them. Mm -hmm. their father in other words and the city of Hebron was named after him so uh, we're going to go now uh, on the same book okay Genesis 6 giants giants master builders of prehistoric and ancient civilizations we were at page 445 we're going to go uh, flip right over to page 459 and read about the city and give us the original name of the city Hebron Curious Arba, named after the progenitor mm -hmm. of the sons of Anak, the giants. Go ahead. Was the chief city? Wait, chief city. It was the capital city of the giants. The capital city Hebron was. Anyway, Curious uh, Arba was its original name. Go ahead. An ancestral home of the Anakim. He's telling us this now. Go ahead. Who named the place after their famous forefather, Arba. That's what we've been saying in this validation. Go ahead. The 12 spies that Moses sent out visited here, and 10 felt great terror. Wait a minute. They did too, brothers. But why? What could cause these 10? And with respect to the report that they brought back, the whole nation melted like butter. Mm -hmm. All the strength that was in them was gone. Mm -hmm. They were terrified. And you know what? In, in, another, in another class, I can show you that Israel knew about these giants even before they saw them because it was passed down from generation to generation. And I'm going to show you that Abraham dwelled among them and knew them very well. Anyway, uh, continue to read this. The ten felt great terror when they looked upon the Anakim's astounding stature. Astounding stature. That means that... They had to be very tall, brothers and sisters. Astounding stature, it said. I mean, not only tall, but with respect to the width of them, they were huge. Mm -hmm. You're not talking about no little bitty giants here. We ain't talking about no nine feet giants. No, not no 10 feet giants either. We're talking about some tall giants. And anyway, continue reading this. Following the Hebrews' conquest of Canaan, this highest town in Palestine mm -hmm. became the possession of Caleb. And you can read that in the book where uh, it was given to Caleb and Caleb uh, kicked the rest of them out of there. Go ahead. Who renamed it Hebron. So Caleb is the one that gave it that name. But its original name was uh, Kiriath Arba. Mm -hmm. That was its original name. Ancient name of, pre, uh, uh, of what they say uh, uh with respect to this book, pre prehistoric and ancient civilizations. Mm -hmm. So this was this ancient name. In any case, did you finish that? Mm -hmm. uh, it said uh, he renamed it uh, Hebron. Um, its original name was Arba, or uh, then he got Kariah Arba, city of Arba, from Arba, the father of Anak. Mm -hmm. And this is what it tells you. So what we're going to do now is go one more place. We're going to go to the Nelson's Quick Reference Bible Dictionary, page 50, and we're going to look at the father of these giants, the sons of Anak, and the Anakim giants. We're going to look at this guy, Arbor, this giant, the famous, and they say he was famous. Mm -hmm. So we're going to look at and read a little about uh, what, this, what it says about him. We're going to go to page 50, and it says Arbor. Read that definition on, on their progenitor. Arba, city of the four, mm -hmm. the progenitor of the Anakim, or sons of Anak. So he was their father. Go ahead. From whom their chief capital city, Hebron, received its name of Kirjatha oh. Arba. And it's saying the same thing that we read earlier. So this is some information 
uh, uh, about what these spies and what Israel was dealing with. They had to fight to take every inch of the promised land away from giants who had taken over the promised land, brothers and sisters, and they had been there for hundreds of years. And I'm going to show you as we go further on in another part that you had intervals between the arrival of Abraham and then uh, you had Isaac and Jacob and so forth. And when you get down to Moses and Israel, then you get down to David, you had three and 400 intervals, years in, talk, in terms of how long it was before another person came to lead Israel or, and so forth. And all this time, what do you think these giants were doing? They were cohabitating and, and growing in number. That's why it was so many of them. Israel fought nations of giants to take the promise. And we're going to show you this. Now let's go right quick because uh, remember also that uh, Abraham dealt with the uh, the children of Heth mm -hmm. or Heath. They were Hittites. Mm -hmm. And you had giants that dwelled amongst the Hittites and ruled over them too. And the Jebusites and so forth. And a lot of these giants came about with respect to these nations. Uh, by inbreeding, brothers and sisters. Yeah, that's history. You can find it and read it and verify it. So these, these Atticum giants, they were the most numerous and the most feared. They ran everything. And this is what Israel was up against. So let's go to, uh, go stay in the numbers, go back to numbers 13 and go to 23. Then we're going to read 28, 29, then go to 31 and 33. So we'll start at the 23rd verse and let's continue because now we're going to take a look because he told them to search out the land. Mm -hmm. Let me know if it's good or if it's no good. Did you have wood, that many trees and so forth and so on. So we're going to take a look at something here that was said and break this down and let you know also what caused fear to fall upon them. They saw something. They saw these giants doing something. Uh, go ahead. And they came unto the brook of Eshcol uh -huh. and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes. Wait a minute. People, do you know what a cluster of gra grapes is? A cluster. You can grab a cluster of grapes with two fingers. Just like that. A cluster of grapes. It looks, you know, I like that. You pick it up. It's got, you know, it's grapes. That's that's all a cluster of grapes is. Go ahead. Hey, and they bear it between two upon a staff. Now, wait a minute. You mean to tell me these grapes that they cut down, one cluster now, they had to carry between two upon a staff, mean two men. And it says... A branch with one cluster. Now, a grape is a vine, is a vine. what we normally. And this is a branch. A branch. Tree branch. Something is going on here, brothers and sisters, <laughs> because I want to let you know something. Big people grow big food. And they had figured out a way to make certain things bigger than they are today. And we're going to show you that in another lesson as well. But imagine one Simple cluster of grape had to be carried by two, two men. men upon a two staff. Two men upon a staff. Go ahead. And they brought of the pomegranates and of the figs. Mm -hmm. After 40 days, they returned with their report. Now, I'll skip down to verse 28 and 29. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. They telling Moses and the elders this now. Go ahead. And the cities are walled oh, a wall. and very great. And very great, meaning very high, very strong. Remember when we read it was mm -hmm. fortified. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was built to the T. You couldn't breach it. And it was also massive, huge. Because giants built this, these walls to the city, brothers and sisters. This is why it says the cities, cities are walled. And go ahead and read that. And very great. Very great. Go ahead. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Go ahead. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. Mm -hmm. And the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. Go ahead. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea mm -hmm. and by the coast of Jordan. Okay, and Caleb then had to calm the people because this report shook them up. 
took all the spirit out of Israel. So Caleb had to calm the people because they were afraid uh, by way of this report and they had really actually saw giants that only the other nation, the other people had heard about. Because mm -hmm. uh, they had been, it, this information had been passed down through generations that, hey, you got giants and, and this was, you know, so and so they heard about it, but nobody had ever saw them. But these 10 spies saw them and it shook them up big time. So Caleb is calm, y'all calm down now. We can take these people. Calm down yeah. now. Yeah. We, we can deal with them because the Lord is with us. But people wouldn't have it. They were, their spirits were broke. Go ahead and start at verse 31. We're going to read to 31 and 33. Go ahead. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people. What? Then the Lord told them to be of what? Good of courage. good courage. That ain't what we reading here, is it? Because mm -mm. they saw them giants and I'm every ounce of strength and bravery that they had, it withered away and vanished. Them giants had to be awesome and huge and big, brothers and sisters. And they did some things too to also frighten Israel. But go ahead. For they are stronger than we, uh -huh. and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, now, how, saying, How can they be stronger than you and God is with you? Mm. This is what they weren't thinking about, but that's what fear can do for you, brothers and sisters. It can, it'll mess you up. You know, you, they got the living God on their side, mm -hmm. leading them, and they just crumbled and fell apart. Go ahead. The land through which we have gone to now, search now, it. Now, hold on a minute. I want you to read this over because I want you to pay attention to this. Because this doesn't make any sense when you when she read it, just literally read it. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Start that over and read that again. The land through which we have gone to search it uh -huh. is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Wait a minute, brothers and sisters. When have you ever known land to literally eat people? Hmm. Now you can kind of get an idea of what frightened these ten spies. They were cannibals, brothers and sisters, and I, you can find that if you search hard enough, too, to let you know that those giants ate flesh, human flesh. They were cannibals. They saw this, and that was part of what frightened them as well. Land don't eat up people. People eat people. This is what you're looking at right here. Go ahead and finish this. And, <clears throat> and all the people. All. You said all the people. So we're talking about a nation of giants here. Go ahead. That we saw in it are men of great stature. Great stature. All the people. They said, go ahead. And there we saw the giants. It's right here. The, the who? The giants. The giants, brothers and sisters. Why don't people go in this book and show you the history of your people. If you say you're a Hebrew Israelite, that's fine. You need to know your history. And this is a tremendously huge part of your history. And you don't know absolutely anything practically about it. About your forefathers and what they had to do. They had to endure. They had to fight these giants to take the promised land from them. And this is what we're reading about here. Uh, but stop, what did, you, what did you end up at? Uh, 33. Go ahead. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. Which we read about. Go ahead. The, which, the, the, the sons of Arba. Mm -hmm. He is their progenitor. Go ahead. Which came of the giants. Arba. Go ahead. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Now, wait a minute, Teresa. <laughs> I, I just want you people to just form a visual for a second. And take this with what it says because it means what it means and says what it says and it's accurate. Can you imagine yourself standing up now, even at four foot nine, mm -hmm. and you see a, gra a grown grasshopper on the ground and that grasshopper before your feet, before your feet, and looking up at you? This is what we're talking about here in terms of what they compared themselves to and these three giants they saw, those three in particular they mentioned, but we talking about a whole city. So they were very huge and, and even if they saying grasshopper as a you know, a, a metaphor right. or a simile of some sort you still, they were very very they, small compared to this is giants. my whole point, that's my whole point, that you're talking about some huge uh, 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 giants here, brothers and sisters. 
This is what frightened those sense spies. Finish this up. And, and so we were in their sight. As they were terrified with what they saw. And like I said, the land don't eat people, brothers and sisters. It don't eat people. People eat people. So these giants were cannibals, the sons of Anak, along with a lot of other giants. They, they ate flesh, human flesh. It's as simple as that. They were cannibals. And now we're going to look at this word giant. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, the Unger's Bible Dictionary, page 402. And we're going to define the word giant to give you uh, 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 the, as much information as we can to let you know that there are, there's a lot of literature out here that lines up with our Bibles. And nobody reads it, at least about these giants. They read about a lot of things, but nobody, I, people don't do lessons about these giants, and they should because this will help you understand what the Hebrews had to go through and endure in order to get the promised land. And um, when they first went into the land, they fell, but after wandering in the wilderness and that generation died out, they came back, the fourth generation, that is, and then they uh, succeeded at doing what the Lord wanted them to do in the first place, what he ordained them to do, because Israel, brothers and sisters, were the, Israel is, at that time, they were the army of God. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you that. And they were sent into the promised land to cleanse it of sinners and all the sin. They were sent there to get rid of them. Not by any means necessary. They were sent in there to kill them all. Mm -hmm. That's why when you read in a book where some people get real sorry and say, I wonder why God, that God in the Old Testament is terrible. He got, he had them Israelites like killing babies and killing mm -hmm. all these babies and women. This is because they were giants. Hybrids. They were not all human. Giants are not all human, brothers. You can't trace these giant giants back to no human beings. These exactly, because when you think about it, and we're talking about giants in the land after the flood. Exactly. Where did they come Where from? We come know from? there were no giants on the boat. They didn't, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't get a ride across the flood on the ark. So where did they come from? These giants came from. Uh, their progenitors, which are the sons of God, which are angels, brothers and sisters. So what you're looking at when the Lord sent Israel in there and they were killing babies and all that, this is why they were doing that. And then they were killing all the animals. Why were they killing the animals? Because you're also dealing with spirits and demons and stuff, and they were inside of these animals. And they were killing those animals because they were these demons were inhabiting these animals. This is why the Lord had that done. I can show you that very clearly as well. But in any case, when you get to others, uh, go to page uh, 402, and, and uh, we're going to read the definition of giant. What does it say about this uh, definition or the meaning of this word giant? Giant, an abnormally tall and powerful human being of ancient Bible land. Mm -hmm. The rendering of several... Hebrew words. And these Hebrew words, because giant is not a Hebrew word, brothers and sisters. Uh, when you look in the Septuagint, you will see gig gigantus, mm -hmm. I believe. And here's a Hebrew word right here. Number one, read that word. Nephilim. <clears throat> Nephilim. Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The form of the Hebrew word denotes a plural verb, adjective, or noun of passive signification. Mm -hmm. Certainly from Nafal to fall. Mean Nafal Nafal meaning to fall. Okay? So this is indicating uh somebody else here. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. So that the connotation is the fallen one. And they had fell. Their their parents fell and they fell also the children of the of the of the uh, uh angels, brothers and sisters. So in a sense you can Use this term to describe both of them depending on the context you read, mm -hmm. you know which one you're talking about. But both of these names can be, be applied to both of them, even though most people say the fallen ones were the angels, you know. Mm -hmm. and then, But the, the, the uh, giants fell also. They didn't know nothing about righteousness and weren't trying to keep the Lord's laws and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So they fell away from any kind of grace mm -hmm. or righteous behavior. They were wicked. They were bloodthirsty giants. They were cannibals and killers. Okay, continue reading. Clearly meaning the unnatural offspring 
which were in the earth in the years before the flood. This is what we just were saying. Mm -hmm. This validates that, right? Go ahead. And also after and that. And also after that. So this is what we're talking about. Uh, when you say to fall, it's letting you know that in this text, in this in, in instance, it's talking about what we said, the unnatural offspring. But we know it really is talking about also their parents because they fell from heaven. Okay, from the grace of God. The angels did. Go ahead. Uh, reference and, number 13 and 33. Right. You can read that in Numbers 13 and 30, which we just came out of and read. <laughs> Go ahead. When the son, sons of God, angels, came in unto the daughters of men. And you can read this in Genesis 6 and 4. This is what this is telling you. Genesis 6 and 4. This ain't no fable, brothers and sisters. This ain't no mythology or no myth. And we're going to all these places beside the Bible to establish this. These giants are written in our Bibles. And they're in the Bible in more than one place. And they dwelt and had complete control over the promised land for years and years and years. Hundreds of years. Generation after generation. And nobody knew where they came from. Mm -hmm. And then th how, how would it not matter... Uh, in terms of the origin of these these giants and they in the Bible and they were who our forefathers fought with for hundreds of years. It has to matter. So we're trying to show you a little bit of that. Okay, continue reading this definition. The mention of great stature of the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, mm -hmm. in the evil report which the ten spies brought out of the land, brought of the land of Canaan. We just read that in Numbers 13 and 33, didn't mm -hmm. we? Go ahead. Together with the Septuagint, rendering gi gigantic. And this is what I said earlier. This is what it says in the Septuagint, the Greek translation of the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, and, and they had gigantes in there instead of giants. Mm -hmm. But it, this word gigantes uh, suggests what? Mm -hmm. Suggests it your face. <laughs> Suggests the translation giants. Giants. That's where we get giants from, brothers and sisters. Translated the word giants from gigantes, meaning these Nephilim or the sons of Enoch. And they have several other names that we're going to run across too. And you're going to know who you've been reading about all this time. When you run across his name, you think it's a different individual. But no, it's talking about the same giants. They just got several names because in each language... They call them different things. Mm -hmm. Like when you deal with the Greeks, they call them titans. Titan, giants, mm -hmm. Nephilim, same, same entity. No difference. And they are not mythology. They are not a myth. They were real, brothers. We're reading about them in the Bible already, now. Mm -hmm. They're real. So did you finish that? No. Okay, continue reading. The real idea of the word must have been fallen ones uh -huh. or monsters of mixed human and angelic birth, this like the rebellious titans giant. It confirmed what I just said right here in this definition. Go ahead. They were exceedingly wicked and violent so that every imagination of the thoughts of men's hearts was only evil continually. You can read this in Genesis 6 and 5, brothers and sisters, letting you know that this definition is lining up with the scriptures. But nobody bothers to look this look for this stuff and subsequently you'll let people tell you that you're reading about something that you know that's not real. What is it doing in the Bible if it ain't real? What mm -hmm. who did Israel fight if them giants wasn't real? Who was in the land of Canaan and why was Israel they, they weren't sitting there to fight midgets, were they? Mm -hmm. They were sitting there and they had to get rid of them giants, bro. Just like the Lord killed them with the flood. After the flood, they reappeared because the angels did the same and thing. That's why he told them to be of good courage. Be of good courage, because you're gonna see some, you gonna you, you've been hearing about them, but now you're gonna really see them. Mm -hmm. And they traveled the land for 40 days. Mm -hmm. In the mountainous area, the low part, in the mid right, they, they traveled through the land and they saw these giants everywhere they went because that's who inhabited at that time the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. And this is the truth. This is documented. We read about this stuff. It's documented in dictionaries, it's documented in, in historical books and so forth. Anyway, what we're going to do now 
It's continuing looking at this. Let's go to Genesis 15 and read something. Because uh, uh, Abraham had a dream, and this dream was in relation to a certain generation returning to the promised land to take it from these giants. Mm -hmm. This is what we're going to read about. It. Abraham, Abraham dream, the Lord actually had him have this dream, and that's what that dream was pointing toward. Israel had to come back after that bad generation that gave that he report died out in the wilderness. That fourth generation, Moses and Joshua brought them back. And that's when they began to take the promised land because they were the children mm -hmm. of those that gave the evil report. Okay? And we're going to start at Genesis 15, and we're going to read, I think, mm -hmm. uh, verse 12 to 16 instead of 14. Okay. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram. On Abram, okay, and he's going to see something. Go ahead. And lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. I mean, his, his dream was terrible. So go ahead. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed his, shall be... His people, mm -hmm. his seed, meaning those who came out of Abraham. Specifically, we're going to find out who he's talking about. Go ahead. He said, Thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not there. And this land, brother, brothers and sisters, is the land of Canaan. But if you do a little research, you know that one time that Egypt and Canaan was the same thing. One rule over another, they were one and the same. If you do history, you can find this. A lot of people try to think that it's separate. No, when you say... When, when he's telling him about this dream for surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs. They were a stranger in the land of Egypt, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Were they not? Mm -hmm. But it mentioned, you, you, you're going to see this talking about Canaan as well. It, it's mentioned in Egypt, but they were one and the same because one ruled over the other. Okay? But anyway, continue reading this. And shall serve them, uh -huh. and they shall afflict them for a hundred years. Where was Israel afflicted? In the land of Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't a whole 400 years that they were in that land of being afflicted. But that's another lesson altogether. I can show you that it was half that time. But in any case, keep reading. And also that nation whom they shall serve. Egypt. Was the nation they served at that time. Go ahead. Will I judge. And he did that. Go ahead. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Mm -hmm. And thou shall go to thy fathers in meaning, peace. Meaning Moses is going to die in mm -hmm. peace mm -hmm. and so forth. But he said he's going to judge that nation, which he did. Uh, but let's continue reading. Thou shalt be buried in a good old age. Mm -hmm. But in the fourth generation... They shall come hither again. And that fourth generation, meaning after that, uh, 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 those people who gave that evil report, after they died out, then their children would be that fourth generation. Mm -hmm. And they were going to be back in the, in the promised land. And look what it says. Read, start over and read that again. But the fourth generation, they shall come hither again. Mm -hmm. For the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And who are the Amorites? Mm -hmm. This is connected to all of this means something, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. And we're going to show you this. And it says that that fourth generation, mm -hmm. after wandering 40 years in the wilderness, that that seed, Abram's seed, because he had this, this dream, they're going to return again to that land. And why? Because the sin of the Amorites is not yet fulfilled, finished. or That's what fulfilled means, finished. Or they ain't through sinning. And the Lord is going to bring that fourth generation of Israel back. They're going to be his army at this time, and they're going to take these but who are the Amorites? We were mm -hmm. talking about uh, the sons of Amen, right. giants. You mean, uh, could, could it be that these Amorites had giants as well? 
We're going to show you that they did, brothers and sisters. These giants were all over the land and had infiltrated every race of people by inbreeding. And they took over these people. They had some small people in the land, but they weren't running nothing. These giants were ruling. All the people in the land, they were ruling and they had capital cities. And some of the cities were full of giants completely. Mm -hmm. Some of them weren't. But throughout the whole land of Canaan, they had these giants in there. And... They were not giving up this land without a fight. Anyway, let's go to Deuteronomy 2 and pick up uh, Israel, this fourth generation, uh, taking care of business here. And starting with Amorites. Because he said mm -hmm. the, Amor the, the sin of the Amorites has not yet been full, full or fulfilled or completed. They had some more sinning to do. Mm -hmm. And remember I told you when we started the lesson, Israel was the army of God. They were sent into the promised land like the flood. They were symbolic of the flood to cleanse the land of all sin and sinners. Mm -hmm. And these giants were definitely sinners. And now we're getting ready to look at, it mentioned the Amorites in that dream. And it's the fourth generation coming back. Let's see who they deal with. Let's see who these people are they dealing with, the fourth generation of Israel returning to the land. Uh, we're going to read, um, start at verse, um, let's start at verse 14, then we're going to double back. I think that's the way I have that written, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start at verse 14, Deuteronomy 2, verse 14, then we're going to skip uh, uh, back to 9 and 11, then 19 and 21, and 25 to 27, then 30, 32, and 34. We're going to pretty much read almost this whole chapter, but I'm spacing it out like that for a reason. Anyway, start reading at 14. And the space in which we came from Kedash Barnea mm -hmm. until we were come over the brook Zered uh -huh. was 30 and eight years until all the generations of the men of war were wasted out from among the host. And and this is from among the people who gave that evil report. Mm -hmm. This is the 38th year and they're starting to get themselves together to go back into the promised land because mm -hmm. this is that generation that uh, Abram had that dream about brothers and mm -hmm. sisters. So finish reading this. As the Lord swear unto them. And he swore and he's keeping his word because he's telling you here. So uh, we're going to go now to verse 9. We're going to read to the 11. Uh, let's look at the first people they encountered when they returned. Because mm -hmm. that dream told Abram that uh, the sin of the Amorites wasn't complete. Mm -hmm. Okay? And uh, we want to start reading there. Verse 9. And the Lord said unto me, Distress not the Moabites. And he, the Lord did that, and, and you can read all in, in the Old Testament about certain people the Lord didn't want Israel to mess with because they were part of what he had planned to do to the inhabitants of the land as well. They were helping him replace these people. The Moabites, which we're going to show you later on in another class, replaced some other giants. Okay, so did the children of Ammon. And so did uh, the children of Esau. They replaced other giants that dwelt in the land. And just like the Israel is going to replace these giants. But anyway, continue to read. Neither contend with them in battle. Leave them alone. For I will not give thee of their land up for a possession. Mm -hmm. Because I have given Ur unto the children of Lot for a possession. Uh -huh. Go ahead. The Emims dwelt therein in times past. These are some more giants. Mm -hmm. And they're going to tell you that just by the description of them. We're not going to look them up, but we're going to read about them a little later on. But these are some more giants that in times past dwelt in the land. And this is who uh, whose land uh, the children of the Moabites took over. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. A people great and many and tall as the Anakim. Just like the Anakim, the sons of Anak. They were tall. These were some huge giants, brothers and sisters. These were actually the first tall people in the land, along with these other ones we're going to read about as well. <coughs> Continue. 
which also were counted giants. As giants. Go ahead. As the Anakim. And we read this out the Bible. Mm -hmm. This ain't got no history book, brothers and sisters, in terms of just a, a regular and normal history. This is right in your Bible. And nobody does any lessons about this or talks about this at all like it means nothing. And believe me, it is it affects you more now than it ever has, and you don't even know how. We're going to show you at some point. And what's worse is they probably, some don't even believe giants ever exist. This is true. But, brothers and sisters, they exist because if you believe the word of God, you got to believe all of it. Not some of it, all of it. And this is something that nobody ever teaches on. And we're just showing you here. We're doing a little bit of history with uh, 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 the Bible and showing you a little bit. And this, this is a real simple lesson. Go ahead. But the Moabites call them emims. Emims, go ahead. I'm going to skip you. We're going to skip down to 19 and read to 21. And when thou comest nigh over against the children of Ammon, uh -huh. distress them not. Don't mess with them. What? Go ahead. Nor meddle with them. Uh huh. For I will not give thee of the land of the children of Ammon any possession. So he's telling the Israel, look, don't mess with them. All right, I got something special for them. It's theirs. Don't mess with them. Leave them alone. Don't meddle with them at all. They're not your enemy. That's not who I sent you into the land to fight. Okay, go ahead. I have given it unto the children of Lot for a possession. And, uh, and also, uh, this was accounted the land of the giants. And continue to read that. That also was accounted a land of giants. Mm -hmm. Giants dwell therein in old times. Go ahead. And the Ammonites mm -hmm. call them Zamzus. Zamzumims. These were some old giants. How, how did they look? Continue to read. A great people and many and tall as the Anakim. These are giants, brother. Right in the Bible, nobody reads about this. Nobody wants to look at their history and this is your history. If you say you are a descendant of the Israelites of the Bible, this is your history. Your forefathers had to fight these giants. And they were cannibals and, oh, come on, they were vicious, violent warriors. Mm -hmm. I want to let you know that too. They were warriors. And they didn't, how can you, you a giant, you looking at a little bitty man, you ain't thinking about losing mm -hmm. to no little bitty person. Mm -hmm. So you arrogant as well, and you're tremendously built. And these giants were in good shape. They weren't just fat and all that. They were in good shape. And a lot of them were not bad looking giants. Josephus talks about King Og and how beautiful he looked and so forth and how he was in shape. And there's a whole lot of other history on giants that were that looked very well. So anyway, uh, but we reading this out of the Bible. Finish reading that. Uh, uh, we're going to get down. But, okay. But the Lord destroyed them before them. <laughs> and they succeeded them. And dwelled in their and dwelled stead. And dwelled in their stead. The children of Ammon dwelt in the Zamzumim stead, meaning took mm -hmm. their land, took their place. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to skip down to 25 and read to the 27. Continue this. This day I began to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, mm -hmm. who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble. And be in a anguish because of thee. Now, they're going to be in fear. See, if the ten spies some 40 years earlier had believed this, this is what would have happened to them giants from Jump Street. But it had to take a, 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 that a 40 years and all of them had to die out. And now their children believe God. And he said, hey, uh, this day, mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to start putting fear in them. And they're going to tremble and be anxious because of you this time. Go ahead. And I sent messengers out of the wilderness of Kedemah mm -hmm. unto Sihon, king of Heshbon. This Sihon is an Ammonite. Or excuse me, Amorite. And remember, Abraham had that dream and say Amorites they had some more sinning to do, but when Israel returned, that fourth generation returned, they were going to deal with them Amorites. This is what we're looking at right mm -hmm. here, brothers and sisters. 
Go ahead. With words of peace saying, let me pass through thy land. I will I will go along by the highway. Mm -hmm. I will neither turn unto the right hand nor to the left. Skip down to verse 30 and continue. But Sihon, king of Heshbon, mm -hmm. would not let us pass by him. Go ahead. For the Lord thy God hardeneth his spirit and made his heart obstinate. And that's the same thing he did to Pharaoh. Yes, it is. Same exact thing. Mm -hmm. See, when the Lord want to get rid of you, he will uh, uh, cause you to do something. Somebody might ask you a simple question. And you turn around and make a big deal out of it when it's just a yes or no. And you make a big deal out of it and all about it three hours. And the Lord is setting you up to be destroyed. Hmm. And he hard your heart and won't make you be reasonable no more. And this is right there. It was a simple request. Hmm. Man, I, I'm going to go straight through your land. I won't be off this way. I won't be off that way. I just go straight through. Just let me through. I won't look at you, won't bother you, nothing. Just let me, no, you ain't coming to my, the Lord put that mm -hmm. on that man's heart, on this giant's heart, because that's what we're reading about here. This scion is a giant. Okay, we're going to find that out as we keep reading. Go mm -hmm. ahead. That he might deliver him into thy hand as appeareth, appeareth this day. And Moses reminding Israel that this is what happened when we started reading this. That's what Moses is doing. He's reminding Israel that that's what they went through, you know, to get where they are. Anyway, let's skip to verse 32. We're going to read 32 to 34. Go ahead. Then Sihon came out against us. Against them. Mm -hmm. the Lord had hardened his heart. So now he is, he is getting ready to die because he is fighting a losing battle, but he don't know it. Mm -hmm. The Lord has set, set him up for destruction. Because he said he was going to put them, he, the Israel, I'm keeping them in your hands to do as you will, and I want them gone. I want them off my land. I don't want them to come back, so I want them dead. Simple as that. That's how the Lord deals, brothers and sisters. You don't want to get him mad mm -hmm. at you. Anyway, go ahead. He and all his people to fight at Jehoz. All his people. These are his giant people. These are giants. Full of giants. Go ahead. And the Lord our God delivered him before us, and we smote him and his sons. His giant sons. Go ahead. And all his people. His giant people, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And we took all his cities at that time mm -hmm. and utterly destroyed the men and the women and the little and ones. And the who? The little ones. Why? Why did they kill the little ones? Because they were giants. Little babies. They were baby giants. Because they would, would have grown up to be giants. Our uh, brother Joshua did a wonderful analogy uh, a few days back. And I'm, I'm going to give it to you. Uh, and I think it, it, it was so wonderful that he put this together. It give you something to consider. If, in fact, you were a maid and you were working in the house of Hitler, and you could see Hitler's growth from a baby up to a man and could see all the destruction he would cause if he if you let him grow into a man, would you allow him to grow into a man? Knowing that this man was gonna kill as many people as he did, murder as many people. That's something to think about. I couldn't tell you what I would do, but this is kind of a, 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 what I'm trying to get you to see here. This is why they killed the women and they killed the little ones, okay, of every city. Because these are giants, all of them. And the Lord commanded them to wipe them out, get them out of his land, because they were also what? Sinners. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. Go ahead. And the little ones of every city, we left none to remain. None, he, he said. And who commanded them? The Lord. And what was his reason? These were giants. And the Lord had had enough. That. that was it. They were cut off. Look, these people are sinners. I want them out of my land, and I brought you back to do this. I want my land cleared of all these sinners. And that's what Israel's job was. Mm -hmm. They were God's army. They were symbolic of the flood waters. They were the flood. They were in there to mm -hmm. cleanse the land of them giants. And this is something that nobody ever does any lesson on or nothing. And it's right here in the Bible. Okay, uh, when you finish that, uh, we're going to continue on. 
Now we know that Israel was commanded to kill everybody, and why they killed everybody? Because this was a, these were hybrids, the contaminated seed of these giants or titans, if you will, brothers and sisters, the offspring of the fallen angels and, and uh, flesh and blood women. This is what we're dealing with right here. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy uh, three, and we're gonna read one to six and skip to eight and eleven. Uh, uh, this is now this is another giant. Amorite giant. Because these are the first people they met when they came back and they had to get rid of them because the Lord said they had not finished sinning yet. But mm -hmm. I'm going to get rid of them. I'm going to have you do this. So they got rid of one uh, Amorite, Sion. They, they're going to get rid of another one. Go to, uh, when you get there, start reading the first one. Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan. Uh -huh. Shan. The Ah uh, and Og, uh, the king of Bashan, came against us. He came out against them. Okay, King Og uh, of Bashan. This is a, another Amorite king. These two kings ran, and just like those three brothers in their time, they were operating out of the capital city Hebron. Here, these guys are operating out of all these cities, mm -hmm. and here, this is this is a, a, a strategic. A strategic stronghold both of these uh, giants had mm -hmm. at this time and they had to go in there and sh and, and look at the weak points mm -hmm. of these of the land and of the city and the, and the, and the people and they had to attack uh, the strongest part and get rid of it and then the rest of it would be easy this mm -hmm. is what you're looking at here because that's why they sent the spies out mm -hmm. so we're reading about King Og now of Bashan uh, uh, Bashan, an uh, Amorite king, he came out against Israel. And go ahead. He and all his people. His giant people, brothers and sisters, go ahead. To battle at Edrei. Uh huh. And this battle here, I, I wish I could really get into this battle and show you this battle because it's recorded historically. Mm. It really is. And it's ex extensive. And the War or the men of war, the strategists, you know how they mm -hmm. uh, strategize about war and how you can beat somebody and you can't beat somebody and why you can't beat them and so forth. When they look at this battle right here, they are baffled that the children of Israel beat King Og because King Og dwelled in a city, a subterranean city, brothers and sisters, that was 70 feet underground. There was no way Israel could get to him because by the shoreline they had a narrow road they couldn't get to him. But he came up out to fight Israel. If he'd have stayed in that hole, the, at least the war historians mm -hmm. thought that he would have never lost. If he just stayed in that city, he would have not. He would have never lost to Israel. But he wasn't fighting just against Israel. Right. And I'm mm -hmm. going to show you at a later date how the Lord got him about that city. It's right here in the Bible, too. Mm -hmm. And you'll be shocked when you read it. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. The, the Lord used wasp. <laughs> he sent wasp down in that, in, that, in, that seven, in that city and ran them up out of there. It's right here in the Bible. It's written in the Bible. It's written in the, in the Septuagint, in the Apocrypha. And that's funny because I, I, I saw a movie called uh, Jack the Giant Slayer. And they use uh, wasp or bees to uh, try and, and defeat one of the giants in heaven. Now you me. know where they got it from. Right out this Bible, <laughs> brothers and sisters. This stuff that you see on a lot of it ain't, and, and I mean the majority of it, it's not uh, a fable. Mm -hmm. They're getting this stuff from real life events that happen. Like I said, this battle is documented. And you should read it because it, it will blow your mind to really get uh, uh, word for word how it went down and the historians or the, or the people that teach war you, they can't understand why did this guy come up out of this city if he would just stayed put he would have never lost to the Hebrews no but God sent them wasp down there and ran them up out there mm. and you can read that in three or four places in the Bible but in any case uh, continue reading this <clears throat> and the Lord said unto me Fear him not. That's what he told them the first time. Mm -hmm. Be of good courage. Now he said, fear not, I got, I got you. I got you faded. Don't, don't worry about him. I got him. Go ahead. For I will deliver him and all his people. All his giant people. Go ahead. And his land into thy hand. Go ahead. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Shihai. Meaning kill everything. Mm -hmm. 
and everybody because these are hybrid beings. These are, are people that I don't want on my land no more. They have been around too long and they are sinners. They are cannibals. They are murderers. They are warriors. They're, no, I don't want, no. I can replace them with a better people. In fact, I can replace them with you, Israel, my people. This, this, you don't understand what the Lord was doing for Israel and what he had in mind. And Israel screwed it up, I'm sorry to say. But anyway, let's continue this story. Go ahead. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Shihon, king of the Amorites. And so now we verify that Shihon was an Amorite. Mm -hmm. And it's in conjunction with the dream that Abram had. Because the first people that Israel and that new generation, that fourth generation encountered were the Amorites. Mm -hmm. These two Amorite giants right here. Go ahead. Which dwelt at Heshbon. Uh-huh. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands Og also. Uh -huh. Go ahead. The king of Bashan and all his people. All and, his giant people. Go ahead. And we smote him until none was left to him remaining. Yeah, they, had to get, they had to get rid of all of them. The Lord commanded him. Go ahead and continue. And we took all his cities at the time. There was not a city which we took not from them. How many? How many cities did that take? Three score cities. Sixty cities. Go ahead. All the regions of Argog, mm -hmm. the king kingdom of Og and Bashan. Okay, go ahead. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates, and bars. Fortified. Go ahead. Beside unwalled towns and a great many. Go ahead. And we utterly destroyed them. As we did unto Shihon, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. They had to, brothers and sisters, because if they had not, these giants would have grew up and just kept breeding and they had to fight them all over again. Couldn't let that happen. This is why they were Israel, the nation of Israel, were killing kids, children. These were giants. Okay, continue. We're going to skip to verse 8. And we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites mm -hmm. the land that was on this side, Jordan, from the river of Arnon unto Mount Hermon. And this Mount Hermon is a key figure in all of this, which I'm going to show you a little bit uh, about this, this Mount Hermon here and where why all these giants were, were, were there. They were around this mountain because this is where the angels first descended, brothers and sisters, Mount Hermon. It was like a monument. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and also, it was part of three uh, peaks. Mm -hmm. And when you look, for, look at those peaks from a, a, a view of the sky, it was a pyramid because mm -hmm. you had mountain peaks. And that's what it was shaped like. But in any case, another lesson. Skip down to verse 11. For only Ah, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Go ahead. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Now you know why. He was a huge giant, brothers and sisters. I'm going to show you this. Go ahead. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? That's where this bed is. You can see it. Okay, go ahead. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. This is a huge man right here, brothers, and I'll give you his measurements a little bit later on. But let's continue. This is a huge giant. Uh, let's continue um, on and go to Deuteronomy 9, and we're going to read from 1 to the 5. We're going to continue reading about these giants and the children of Israel taking the promised land from them. And uh, again, here's Moses reminding Israel and uh, that they are God's chosen people. And uh, reminds them again how they took the land and destroyed all these giants or these titans uh, with God's help. They didn't do it because of their own strength. So uh, when you get to one star. Hear, O Israel, mm -hmm. thou art to pass over Jordan this day. Go ahead. To go in to possess nations greater and mightier than thyself. Oh, what are these nations great? He said nations, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. Nations of who? Giants. 
Nobody's been paying attention to this. That's who, if you profess to be a Hebrew Israelite, that's who your forefathers had to fight to take the promised land from. Giants. Go ahead. Cities great and fenced up to heaven. Go ahead. We fenced up to heaven. That means they were real tall They were tall real fences. tall fences mm -hmm. built by real tall giants. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The people great and tall and children of the Anakims. Here we go to today. Children of the Anakims, uh, the, the sons of Anak. Go ahead. Whom thou knowest and of whom thou hast heard say. Who can stand before the children of Abraham? That's what they used to say about these giants because they were so, they were tremendously huge, brother, and tall. And they were warriors. And they would ask the question, it would be, you know, mm -hmm. who could stand before these, these giants? Mm -hmm. and that was the question. But let me show you something and show you why they made this statement. Let's skip down. Uh, and, and go into the book of Amos, the second chapter, and read one verse. This is going to let you know why it was, it was, they were talked about like this. Amos is going to give you a description of these giants to show you how huge they were. And uh, they weren't no little giants like I told you. <clears throat> if you read all the information in the scriptures, you start really shaking your head. These were some huge giants. I ain't talking about nine feet because you got to understand that there's more than one form of a cubit. There's an 18 inch cubit, but there's one bigger than that, and it, there's another one. Okay? And that's the one that the Hebrews was using, and this would make Goliath way bigger than nine, and way taller than nine feet. Way tall. And so on. So, in any case, go to Amos 2 and 9. Let's read the ninth verse and get a description of, of these uh, uh, giants. This is why that statement was made. Who can stand against the children of Aden. Mm -hmm. This is why that statement was made. Read that ninth verse in Amos 2. Yet destroy I the Amorite before them. These uh, the Amorites, the, the Lord is talking about, that Israel had to go into the land. The first people, they met these giants mm -hmm. and they destroyed them. So the Lord said, yet I destroyed these Amorites. Mm -hmm. And these were some big giants. He's going to let you know they go in. Whose height was like the height of the cedar. Of the cedars. Mm -hmm. Cedar trees. Brothers and sisters, do you know how tall cedar trees get? Set minimum of 70 feet. Mm. A minimum of 70 feet. I'm not saying that they had 70 feet giants, but just to give you some idea of how and why Israel say they look like grasshoppers mm -hmm. to these giants. These are some big giants, brothers and sisters. Mm. Because they have found skeletal remains of giants as tall as 36 feet. And they got mm -hmm. them in museums. Smithsonian and so forth, and that's real. And uh, but he say they were as the height of the cedars. And not only do they grow seventy feet tall, they grow in girth, meaning width, sixty three feet. Mm -hmm. This is this is the cedar tree. And he compared these Amorite giants and the rest of them to the cedar. Go ahead. And he was strong as the oaks. Is an oak. One of the strongest trees mm -hmm. in, in the world. Mm -hmm. This is how he's, he's comparing this oak tree with respect to the strength of these Amorites. Mm -hmm. They were strong, but they were giants. Go ahead and finish this. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his root from roots from beneath. Go ahead. Also, I brought up you up from the land of Egypt and led you forty years through the wilderness. To, to possess the land of the Amorites. And he brought that forth. The Lord led them through, killed out all the remaining part of the ones that get their ear report and brought their fourth generation right back into the land and they started fighting the Amorite giants, which we read. Let's go now to 1 Samuel 17. We're going to read verse 26. And I want to confirm that I said earlier that Israel was the army of God. I want to read that to you. Something that David said. Okay, later on down the line, many years and hundreds of years later, when <clears throat> he had to fight Goliath, it was something he said, and I don't know if people caught this. I'm going to read that one verse. He said it more than once, but let me just read one time where he said something. Go to uh, 1 Samuel 17, verse 26, and read that 26 verse. Let's see what David says about Israel. God's people. And David spake 
unto the men that stood by him, saying, mm -hmm. What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine Go ahead. and taketh away the reproach from Israel? Uh -huh. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Israel was the army of the Lord, brothers and sisters. And he said, he said who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Israel, as I told you when we began this lesson, was the army of the Lord. It was symbolic of the flood waters. They were sent into the land to clean it out, to clean the land up and get all these sinners, meaning them giants, up out of the land. Every phase and every part of it. And he reproached Israel by talking the way he was talking to him. Anyway, we're going to continue to move on. But as I said, I want to just verify by the mouth of a true witness that Israel was indeed the army of the living God. And David tells us right here that they mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. You know, so we've confirmed this. And um, they were the baptized and anointed army of the living God. Let's put that in there as well. Let's go to Joshua 2 and 1 and read one verse there. And we're going to read uh, uh, what Joshua now, Moses didn't die. Joshua's leading the Israel across the, uh, the Jordan. And the Lord, uh, um, I believe, dries it up and so forth. And they go on and dry shot. And, and they, and, uh, uh, but we're going to go right here because we're going to read about another city, another stronghold of these giants. And you're going to be surprised that giants dwelt in this city too. We're talking about the city of Jericho. Hmm. And I want to read you a little bit about this just so you can confirm and see that that's what we're talking about here. Giants inhabited Jericho. At that time, it was the capital at that time of these giants. They operated from it. And we're going to show you this. But when you get to Jericho, I mean, sorry, uh, Joshua 2 and verse 1, uh, and of course we know about the harlot Rahab and all what she did. She helped the spies and so forth and, and she let them down and, and sent them that way and, and they you know, escaped the, the giants that were looking for them because it was chasing them, it was trying to find them giants. And they knew they were there and stuff and they knew they were spying out the land. Anyway, uh, uh, we're going to start, we read that one verse and move on. Read that one verse, Joshua 2 and verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim, Two men to spy secretly, saying. Just like Israel always do. When they get ready to take something from somebody, the land, they have to send people to spy to see what's strong about it, what's weak about it, and so forth. And then they put their plan together, and they know the weakest point to hit, and boom. But this was an unusually uh, strong city right here. This city had two uh, sets of walls. No other people don't realize that. You had the wall, then you had another wall inside of that same height. This is what history will show you when you read about the city. But go ahead. Go view the land, even Jericho. Uh huh. And they went and came into the a, an harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. Mm, we're going to skip now to verse 11 and read 11 and 12. And soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. This is Rahab telling them, we heard that the Lord was with y'all. And, you know, word got around to us and all the people in the city. Hey, man, we melted because, you know, y'all been destroying everything y'all touched. So we ain't got a chance. So now she's making a deal with them. If I help you, will you save me and my family and so forth? And they agreed to do that. So this is what we read here. Go ahead. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man, in any man. Go ahead. because of you. Mm -hmm. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. Because of you, the army of the living God. Go ahead. Now, therefore, I, I pray you, mm -hmm. swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token. And they did. And they saved her and her whole household or anybody that wound up in her house, they were saved. It could have been a, a friend, a neighbor. It wasn't necessarily her family members. Anybody that was in that house, they didn't Israel didn't mess with them. And they didn't come out either. 
until they got through doing what they had to do to take the city and then they came out and uh, that was that. Let's keep it moving and move and go to Joshua 5. We're going to read 13 and 15 and read something else because before Joshua takes Jericho, he's, you know, just sitting in and thinking and he's out there on, on the road or just out and he sees a man and he, he walks up to this man, who is this guy? This guy got a sword drawn in him. Whoa. So he is going to investigate uh, who this guy is. So when you get to 13, read Joshua 5, 13 to 15. Let's look at what this says. And it came to pass when Joshua by, was by Jericho, uh -huh. he, that he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn. Is this a real man? Mm -hmm. This is an angel, brothers and sisters. And we're going to show you that. Go ahead and finish this. With his sword drawn in his hand. Uh -huh. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversaries? He said, are, are you here to help us? Are you here to help these, these giants? Mm -hmm. This is what he asked him. This is what he actually asked him. Uh, I was our enemies. Mm -hmm. This is what he said. Are you here for these, you know? And look what this, uh, this angel tells him. Go ahead. And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord am I now come. Now, this is an angel. He's captain of the Lord's host. Mm -hmm. If you define this word host, that means captain Power. of the Lord's army. And in this sense, we're talking twofold here. The mm -hmm. literal army on earth, which Joshua is leaving, leading, mm -hmm. and the army of the host of heaven that's up there. Mm -hmm. This is what he's telling you here. And they laid siege on the city of Jericho. Go ahead. <clears throat> and Joshua fell on his face to the earth mm -hmm. and did worship and said unto him, what saith my Lord unto his servant? Uh -huh. And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is, standest is holy. And Joshua did so. I wonder, and this is Jericho. When you look at the location of Jericho and the promised land, brothers and sisters, like I told you, you deal with the parameters and, and all of the... Uh, locations that you you see that was holy land all of it because it used to be called something else we're not gonna get into that though and what we're gonna do here is continue moving and continue reading and showing you just simple scriptures about who our forefathers had to fight to take the promised land uh, away from what people giants they didn't just deal with no normal people. They had to fight giants. And we're reading about them. And nobody ever does a lesson to explain to you that your forefathers went through this. And again, I'm, I'm going to show you later on that these giants that died long ago, before the flood and after the flood, they still affect your life, my life, the life of our loved ones, our children, today and beyond us. Let's go to Joshua 6 and 1 and continue this. We're going to go to the 6th chapter of Joshua, read verse 1, then skip to 17, and then we're going to read 20 to 21. To continue this, we're going to read about Jericho and how it was taken down. Uh, let's read. When you get to verse 1, read. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. Uh -huh. None went out and none came in. And who did Israel have with them as the captain of the host? Mm -hmm. Hey. They had the, 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 they had the army of the Lord they that the, was up in the sky too, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. He was the Angels. captain of the He was the, the captain of the host of, of the, the Lord. Lord. So this is who with Israel too. All right. Skip to verse 17 and read that. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all there that are therein. All is said that are there in the city. Go ahead. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. Uh huh. She and all that are with her in in the house. So it didn't matter if it was her family. Whoever was in that house was saved. Go ahead. 
because she did hit the messengers that we sent. Go ahead. Now skip down to 20 and we're going to read 20 and 21. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet. Go ahead. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet the and the people shouted with a great shout. With a great shout. Go ahead. And what happened? And the wall fell down flat. And we're going to read something about this. I could tell you, but I'm not. We're going to read it. But go ahead. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Gonna, I'm going to even show you which way the wall fell. We're going to read an historical account of this because they sent archaeologists in and they, and they dig and whatnot, and they can tell you things about what something what would happen, even things that happened sometimes a thousand years ago or fifteen hundred years ago, and this is what they did. And it, you're gonna be very shocked when we read this. But I, you can, you can, you can, you can tell somewhat uh, uh, some of this because remember, Israel had the captain of the Lord's host mm -hmm. fighting with them, mm -hmm. and he wasn't by himself, brothers and sisters. But go ahead and continue this. And they. <coughs> And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city. As they did all the giants, the giants cities when they attacked them. They had to. You couldn't uh, leave them alive and come back and, and wait 20 years and there'd be another 4,000 of them. No. They had to get rid of these giants, all of the children as well. That's why they had to do that. Okay, now you understand why the Lord would send Israel into these cities and kill all the babies. Because they were killing giants. Okay? Go ahead. Both man and woman, young and old, and ox and sheep and ass with the edge of the sword. And these uh, ox and sheep, they were uh, uh, killed because in this sense, in these cities, these giants dealt with a whole lot of stuff like uh, witchcraft. Did a lot of that. Spells and different things and and these animals were, were uh, inhabited by demons. That's why they had to get rid of the animals too. And the Lord would be upset with Israel when he told them to kill everything and they wouldn't. That's why he got uh, mad at Saul. Because mm -hmm. he kept not following his command. Because it was a reason why he wanted them to kill everything. <coughs> in any case, <coughs> they, you know, you, you have to think about this also, brothers and sisters. What two things does uh, Sion and Og, uh, the Amorite kings, have in common with the inhabitants of Jericho? They were giants also. And we're going to prove that to you. Okay? And the second thing is what was so special about the city of Jericho. We're going to show you what that was too. We're going to go to now to a book called The Dictionary of Angels, including the Fallen Angels. That's the title of this book. A Dictionary of Angels, including the Fallen Angels by Gustav Davison page 212, and I just want to show you Og, okay, was a descendant of a fallen angel. We're going to give you his name. Okay? And you can read the name of this angel in the book of Enoch. Okay? And he was the leader of these fallen angels. So, But Og was a grandson of this mm -hmm. angel. So when we get there, we're going to go to page 212. This is a Dictionary of Angels, including the Fallen Angels by Gustav Davidson, page 212. Read what it says, the definition of, about King Og. Og, a descendant of the Fallen Angels. Who? The Fallen Angels. A descendant of the Fallen Angels. Go ahead. The, and these Fallen Angels are the sons of who? The sons of God, brothers and mm -hmm. sisters, that fell. Remember, we read the Paul, the mm -hmm. fallen ones? Mm -hmm. This is what we're reading here. Go ahead. The son of Ahijah. Okay, this is the, his father. Go ahead. The grandson of Simjaza, the fallen angel. This is who he's related to, brothers and sisters. Simjaza. He is the grandson of the leader of these fallen angels. And y'all don't believe this stuff, but it's everywhere. And if you never heard that name Sim, Simjaza before, if you 
kind of watched that movie, Mo, uh, what is it, Noah? Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's mentioned, mentioned in that that's movie. That's right. And yeah. people, don't th then people think, now that movie was, a, a lot of stuff in there was just changed and turned around, but you listen very carefully and look, and you know what you're looking at, that movie gave Noah, it gave you a whole lot of historical and biblical information that was very accurate. Mm -hmm. But people don't know what they're looking at, and they, they don't pay attention. They mention not only his name, they mention Og as well mm -hmm. in the movie. And we're reading about Og, and we're reading about Sim Jaja right here. But these are real life uh, beings here. Mm -hmm. And it's, go ahead and finish that. Uh, the grandson of Sim Jaja, the fallen angel. And the brother of Shion. So they, Shion. They, these two Amorite kings... Sion, the king of ba uh, Heshbon, mm -hmm. and Og, the king of Bashan, Amorites, both of them were brothers. Mm -hmm. And if Og is the grandson of Sim Jaja, who is Sion? Mm -hmm. He's also he's the also the grandson. They brothers. Mm -hmm. Continue reading this. In Jewish tradition, Og was an Amorite giant slain in the ankle by Moses. Uh-huh. You can read that. Go ahead. In Numbers 21 and 33. Okay. Continue. Og is king of Bashan who is delivered into the hands of Israel by God. We read that. We're going to stay into the dictionary of angels including the fallen angels by Gustav Davidson and we're going to turn to page 274. And we're going to read about his brother, Sion. What, it says, what does it say about Sion? Sion, grandson of the fallen angel Simjaza and brother of Og. They were brothers. These Amorite giants were brothers. And they were descendants of the fallen angel Simjaza. And other historical books will tell you this. Enoch will confirm this. And other books as well. Book of Jubilees and so on. But anyway... Uh, and remember, Sinjaza is a, a fallen one, or a fallen angel, or a watcher, or simply the son of God. He's one of the sons of God that fell, that came down. Okay? Now we're going to move on, and we're going to stay, we're going to go back to, I mentioned this book to you earlier, it took me three years to find this book. This is the book we're reading out of for historical uh, references and whatnot about these uh, giants, the master builders of prehistoric and ancient civilizations. Okay, this is the name of this book. And so we're going to go back to this book. It's a great book, brothers and sisters. And as I said earlier, 99% of the information is accurate. It is true. And it lines up with the scriptures 1,000% perfectly. I tell you that you need to get this book. But anyway, we're going to go to Genesis 6, Giants, Masters, and this book... Uh, let me say again, is by Stephen Quayle. He's the author of this book. And it's an excellent book. Fantastic. The information, you can't find any other uh, information like this. I'm sorry, I, I read a lot of books and this is by far a great book. In any case, uh, it's historically accurate. But anyway, we're going to go to and back into this book, Genesis 6, uh, Master Builders of Prehistoric and Ancient Civilization, page 4, 53 to 455, and I gathered all this information off of all these pages, 453, 454, and 455, and I just put it together just to read to you some information about Jericho, the city of Jericho. We just read about it in the Bible, and this is a historical uh, account, or prehistoric, uh, about this ancient civilization, and we're going to read and see what it says about Jericho's giants, because that's who lived in there. That's why the walls were so high, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Giants was in that city. Mm -hmm. That's who lived in Jericho. But anyway, when you get there, start reading. Jericho, Jericho giant. Uh huh. From the most ancient times, Jericho was known as the world's oldest city. Uh huh. Go ahead. Modern excavators confirm. It's great antiquity. Mm -hmm. The they say Jericho's ruins show show it to be the earliest instance of urban civilization known to man. Uh -huh. In olden days, it also became widely known as the city of giants. As the what? 
City of Giants. Jericho is known, brothers and sisters, in the olden days as the City of the Giants. You didn't know this. The City of the Giants. That's what was in Jericho. That's why that angel came forth and, and helped Israel deal with this city because it was fortified to the T. And we're going to just gonna show you that. But remember, it was known in the olden days as the city of the giants. Okay, continue. Because so many Gaborim once... Whoa! Who? Gaborim. Gaborim. G-I-B-B-O-R-I-M. This is another name for giants, which we're going to look up later. But that's all it is, Gaborim, because it, it was known as the city of giants because so many Gaborim, meaning giants, go ahead. Live... <laughs> Lived within its walls. Within its what means within this within the, inside the city. The city. Mm -hmm. This is what this is telling you. Go ahead. Today, however, most people remember Jericho for its unique place in the annals of warfare. Mm -hmm. For here in Joshua's day occurred perhaps the strangest battle of all time. And it, it, it was really go ahead. According to the biblical records. Now, what did it say? According to the biblical records. Go ahead. Which have now been verified by modern archaeology, archaeological work. And the biblical records, the Bible, the word of God has been verified, it tells us right here, by modern archaeological work. Okay, go ahead. Jericho's high fortified walls collapsed before the Hebrews' onslaught as if literally knocked down by the hand of God. Who was with Israel? Hey, his host, the captain of, of his home. That's it's all, that's, that's who knocked it's, it, it, it. It also appeared to be knocked down by the hand of God. It was. Mangels mm -hmm. knocked that wall down, brothers and sisters, but it was more than one wall. Go ahead. This took place after the Hebrews at Joshua's command, marched around the city for seven days. Uh -huh. And the sudden buckling of the walls at the end of the seven, seven days march at the sound of the last trump. And it says walls. I'm telling mm -hmm. you, it's two it's sets of walls. walls. And, but uh, we might not, I might not have put that in here, but I'm just letting you know that. Read this. Find the information about Jericho, and you'll see that was a fortified city of giants, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Followed by the besiegers, mighty shouts, shout mm -hmm. was foretold by Joshua uh -huh. in his j journal. Joshua also mentioned Jericho's giants. Je who? Jericho's giants. Uh, Jericho's giants, brother. That's what they got there in common with the Amorites and the rest of the, the Emims and the Zamzamims and so on. They were giants, children of Anak. Them, excuse me, Anakims. Mm -hmm. The father, the progenitor, was Arba. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're reading about here. This is in our Bibles. Mm -hmm. This is the history of Israel. If you say you are related to them, I'm not going to argue the point. This is your history. Ain't nothing to argue about, but this is your actual your history. And everybody needs to know about this. But go ahead and continue this. This brief reference recorded in Joshua two, 6 and 2. It's right there where you can read it. Go ahead. Quotes the Lord as saying to him, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. It's king and the mighty men of valor. And this word, mighty men of valor, is the same way Moses described the giants in Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. the, this, word, this mighty men of valor is talking about the Giborim. <coughs> or it's talking about the Nephilim. Or in plain English, giants. Mm -hmm. This is what this is going to tell you. Go ahead. The mighty men here denotes the Gabor. Uh -huh. This phrasing being derived from the same Hebrew word that Moses used in Genesis 6 and 4 to signify giants. Can I just say that? This is what you read. This information is everywhere. And nobody is exposing this to you as if it just means nothing. It's in the Bible. It's got to have some meaning, some reference. 
It has a historical reference. It has a reference for our time now and even beyond us. And I'm going to show you what that is. Continue <coughs> reading this. Thus, Joshua indicates that when Jericho's walls fell outward. Outward. Mm -hmm. They fell outward, brothers and sisters, meaning those hosts, that host of heaven, did not kick them in. They seemed to be over inside of Jericho's walls and they knocked them outward. This is what this is saying. This has been uh, researched. And this is what they, the, the conclusion they came up with. Irregardless, they were knocked down. They were by those kicked down or pulled or down. Pulled down. Outward. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the Israelites charged over the dusty pile of rubble into the city. Some of the combatants <coughs> they met and slew were the Gaborim. Who? Gaborim. The, the giants, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And and that was their job, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. An ancient tradition incidentally confirms this scripture, for it relates that some of Jericho's giants escaped the doom of of the doomed city and fled to Africa. And this is accurate. Go ahead. And became because. And, beca and because of a certain large grove, Jericho also became known as the city of Paul. <laughs> Let's keep it moving. What we see here, who dwell behind the walls of Jericho, brothers and sisters? <laughs> It was a city of giants. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the name of this city. It was it was in ancient times they had another name. Uh and we're gonna see what that is. We're gonna go uh in this and read something else. And I didn't put the page of this particular uh uh um name here, and it doesn't really matter, but the name is Bet Jib uh, uh and it means something. And uh, I want you to read the meaning of, read that uh, name of that uh, city. Bet Gibrim. That's the name of a city. It means what? It means the house of Giborim, i.e. the giant. That's the house of giants. Continue to read that. The town, which still exists even to this day, commands the entrance to the valley of Zephatha. Mm-hmm. On the road from Jerusalem to Gaza, because of its enormous caverns, it has been called one of the most amazing cave cities in the world. They're describing this uh, city here and it's telling you about it. It was a cave city. Mm -hmm. Just like I mentioned to you about uh, King, uh, King Og had a, uh, a subterranean city that was 70 feet deep in the earth. And he's talking about another one right here. It's going to tell you that. Com uh, complete this. Some of the caves measure up to 400 feet long, mm -hmm. while their ceilings reach to heights of 80 feet. Why would you need an 80 feet tall ceiling? Mm -hmm. There were giants living in them, brothers and sisters. When you start looking up some of this stuff in the Bible, it will blow your mind to see what it's connected to. And it's going to lead you to mainly these giants. And their progenitors, the angels, the sons of God. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move to, uh, to Joshua 12. We're going to read 1 to 5 and then 7 to 10. Let's continue to move because uh, the Bible gives us uh, the city and the name of the giant king that ruled over the inhabitants, which Moses and Joshua Israel and the army of God, you know, they killed mm -hmm. uh, these, these giants. But anyway, we're going to read a little something else here in Joshua 12. Uh, when you get to verse 1, read. Now these are the kings of the land. And these are all the kings that adding uh, the two that Moses dealt with and then the rest of them, Joshua and the children of Israel killed. We're not going to read all of them, but you can go in here and read and we know from reading this these were these kings were what? Giants. They were giants, brothers and sisters. You know why pays attention to this. And like I said, uh, a lot of these cities were taken over by these giants because of inbreeding. And some of them did not incorporate entire cities of giants as opposed to others because the reason you know uh, that these this entire city was uh, full of giants, the Lord had them kill the animals, 
Mm -hmm. The babies, the women, and the children, these were all giants that inhabited this city. Whatever city you read about in the Bible that was killed like that, or the people, the inhabitants killed like that by Israel, these were all giants. But then in some cities, he didn't kill the animals mm -hmm. and didn't kill the women. Let you know that they were not all giants. That's why you read the, the difference there. And that's why those uh, <laughs> spies that went out first, uh, before the fourth generation, they were saying that the land, uh, it, 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 it's it inhabitants. inhabitants because there were uh, regular people also mm -hmm. in that land. And these giants were eating them people. Mm -hmm. This is all they were, they were. They were cannibals, and so and they saw this. But in any mm -hmm. case. This is why you have that, that difference there when you see how Israel attacked these cities. Some cities they destroyed everything and some they didn't because they were not all giants. They were still ruling though. But these kings here, all of them are giants. Simple as that. But anyway, start uh, that in verse 1 again and read this. Now these are the kings of the land which the children of Israel smoked mm -hmm. and possessed their land on the other side, Jordan, toward the raising, rising of the sun. Okay. From the river Arnon unto Her Mount Hermon. Here you go, this is Mount Hermon. Brothers, I'm going to show you a little bit about what happened on this mount. That's when these sons of God agreed uh, to uh, sin against God and put on themselves curses. Because that's what happened to them when they agreed to sin willfully against God. Okay? But this Mount Harmon is, in, is involved in everything. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And all the plain on the east. Go ahead. Shihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon, mm -hmm. and ruled from Aor, Aor, okay, which is upon the bank of the river Arnon. Go ahead. And from the mid middle of the river and from half Gilead. Gilead was occupied by giants first. Israel moved just like moved into an apartment that was already furnished. They had cities they didn't have to build. They had all of this stuff was built by these giants. Hebron. Mm -hmm. Even Jerusalem was occupied at a point by giants. And you know what Jerusalem is. I don't have to tell you what that is. But giants occupied all the land. And most people don't know that Jerusalem is the Garden of Eden, brothers and sisters. If you do your research, you'll find that out. But giants have taken that over all of the land of Canaan, including Jerusalem. Okay? But we're reading about this. Go ahead and continue this. Even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the children of Ammon. And we read about them. The Lord told Israel not to mess with them. Go ahead. And from the plain to the sea of Chinaroth mm -hmm. on the east, and unto the sea of the plain, even the salt sea on the east. Go ahead. And the way by the way to Beth Jeshemoth mm -hmm. and from the south under Ashdoth Fishka. Go ahead. And the coast of Ah, king of Bashan, which was of the remnant of the giants <coughs> that dwelled in Ashtaroth and at Edria. That's that where that uh, mm. where uh this city was that was 70 feet underground at this place right here, Edra. And um, which simply means uh, mighty. That's what that means as well. When you mm -hmm. look that word up, it means mighty. Every time you look at this word mighty, it just reference to these giants, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters. They got all kind of clues and, and things that you can read that'll show you that there's more to this Bible than meets the eye. And especially this subject, nobody wants to teach it. I want to sit down and look at this thing and see that this really happened. These giants were real. Okay? And we're going to show you more about it when we get into part two. But in any case, uh, uh, we wound up here. Continue reading this. And rained in Mount Hermon. And rained in what? Mount Hermon. Mount, that we go with Mount Hermon again. It's the reason why this is constantly mentioned. Go ahead. And the Salkai mm -hmm. and 
in all Bashan unto the border of the Ge Geshurites. Go ahead. And the Maccathites. Go ahead. And half Gilead, the border of Shihon, king of Heshbon. And these these two brothers ruled a vast yeah. amount of land. Now, I well, to think of it, if they're giants, they have to have a lot of room to I, live. Exactly. I, I didn't read you to all of the boundaries, but this is tremendously huge. We're talking about the entire land of Canaan, brothers and sisters. And most of the land that's around it, and these giants ran everything. And they did this for hundreds of years. But anyway, skip down to verse 7 and continue to read this. We're going to read to the 10. And these are the kings of the... The giant kings. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Of the country which, jo which, which Joshua and the children of Israel smote on this side, Jordan. Because they were sent into the land to get rid of who? The giants. So these kings we're reading about... That's what they were. Go ahead. On this side, Jordan, on the west, uh -huh. from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon. The valley of Lebanon. Go ahead. Even unto the Mount Halak that goeth up to Seir. Which is what the children of uh, Esau wound up getting as their inheritance. Go ahead. Which Joshua gave unto the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their division. Uh -huh. And the mountains in the mountains. In, in the mountains and in the valleys and in the plains and in the springs uh -huh. and in the wilderness and in the south country, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The king of Jericho won... Wait a minute. The king of Jericho was a giant, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Won the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel. He's, he was a giant as well. Go ahead. Won the king of Jerusalem. Same thing. Won the king of Hebron. We know that was a giant. Mm -hmm. This is what we read about here, brothers and sisters. All these places were inhabit, inhabited in prehistoric times by giants and nobody pays attention to this this is historically this the bible is a historical book as well don't forget that and a very accurate one too but again when you can run across other information outside of the bible that lines up with it it's a gorgeous and beautiful thing and this is what we've done so far in this lesson but uh did you finish that hebron is yeah, one right that's what it says, and Hebron is one. So all these cities we read about are these kings, and remember the Hittites and, and the Canaanites, remember Amorites? Well, King Og and Shion were Amorites. Mm -hmm. Okay? When you got parasites, giants were amongst all these people. And it might not have been total giants in some of them, but they inbreeded so they could run and rule over these people, brothers and sisters, because these giants were fierce warriors, and they weren't taking orders from nobody. They were rulers, men of renown, famous warriors, mm -hmm. okay? Anyway, um, let's keep on uh, uh, moving because we're going to read further where Israel, every time Israel fought, we read about them fighting the Hittites mm -hmm. and the Gergesites and the Jebusites and the Parasites and the Canaanites and whatnot. They had to fight them because, like I said, because of inbreeding. Mm -hmm. And it was giants among these people and the Gabor was among them, so they had to fight them as well because they were ruling over these people. Just like when you read about, which we're going to deal with in part two, about Goliath. He was from God. Mm -hmm. Do you think Goliath was in there taking orders from the Philistines or was he giving orders? Mm -hmm. You think about that. He was this man was a giant. He wasn't running from nobody. These people were scared of, if they, Israel was scared of these giants and other people were afraid of them, do you think the Philistines was, was given and giant and Goliath had brothers? Mm -hmm. Okay? So he wasn't taking the orders from nobody. He was giving them. This is what you're not paying, because they say he was a champion. Okay? In any case, we're gonna move on and we're gonna look at some more historical information about certain that we read earlier about uh um the giant's capital city of Hebron. 
And we remember when Israel came to the land, they saw three giant sons of Anak. And the first one was uh, uh, she, she, uh, she, Shea. Mm -hmm. That's what it was, the S H E S H A I. Uh, let's read a, a little bit about this giant, and he'll give us a little information about all of them, all three brothers. And it's going back into the G Genesis 6 giant master builders of prehistoric and ancient civilization, page 468. Let's read about this first giant that Israel saw when they spied the land out. What does it say about this one? Shishai. Shishai. Moses identified Shishai as one of the three giant brothers who ruled a clan of the Canaanite Anakim mm -hmm. from Hebron. And, 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 and they ruled. It's telling you that from Hebron. Go ahead. When the Hebrews, Israel, were encamped at Kadesh Barnea. Okay, go ahead. The terrifying sight of she Shai, Ahiman, and Ptolemai. These are the three brothers, these giants Israel saw. Go ahead. Inspired ten of Moses' spies to return with a recommendation to forget an evasion of the promised land. This is what they did. They saw these giants and they were terrified. You know what I'm saying? They eating people. They huge. Uh, they they just they they lost all their courage. But go ahead. We're gonna finish this. Their evil report so frightened the Hebrew congregation that they rebelled against Moses. Shishai apparently took his name from the great height for from his great height from his apparently took his name from his great height for. Declares, declares Bakar. Mm -hmm. It refers to his stature. That's what, which, his, that's what his name means. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which measures six cubits, i.e. nine feet. Using today's modern cubic, 18 inches, 1.5 feet. However, if you we use the original sacred Hebrew cubit mm -hmm. of 25.025 or 2.10 feet, Shishai was 13 feet tall. And this is the truth, brothers and sisters. This is what you're looking at. Uh, when you look in the Bible, these giants were taller than what they're showing you because they're not using the right cubit, okay? But anyway, we're going to stay in the giants, uh, Genesis 6 giant master build of the prehistoric and uh, ancient civilization, page 417, and we're going to read about another brother. Uh, Hyman. Hyman. A Hyman. A Hyman. Okay, what does it say about him? A Hyman was one of three giant brothers whose great stature so terrified ten of the men Moses sent to spy out Canaan that they later persuaded the Hebrews not to attack. The three brothers apparently ruled the Anakim nation. Anakim from who? Nation. Nation of giant, giants, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. From Hebron, which was later captured by Caleb. Okay, we're going to see in Genesis 6, giants, master builders of the prehistoric and ancient civilization, and we're going to go to page 479 and read about the last brother, what it says about him, uh, uh, Talmia. Talmia from Hebron, Hebron, the giant Gaborim, Talmia and his huge brothers, and his huge brothers, uh, Shishai and Ahiman mm -hmm. ruled the three tribes of the Anakim who were called by their names. Mm -hmm. The a generation after they came out of Egypt, the Hebrews defeated them and took possession of all their land. Okay. On the wall of the tomb of Omen Nef Nephthah, Nephthah one. Of on the tomb of Omen Nephthah one. This was the Egyptian uh, king here. Go ahead. Appears a drawing resembling a son of Anak. He is depicted as tall and light complected. Belzoni, who opened the tomb, read 
the hieroglyphical inscription as Ten Mahu mm -hmm. or, or by, by El Elysian Tel Maya. This was this giant here they saying that, that was depicted on this wall. And it goes on to say the name given to one of the tribes of the children, children of Amen. Amen. Okay, mm -hmm. now we're going to go to, I believe here, the um, last uh, last scripture in this lesson. We're going to go back to Genesis 14, and we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Um, and we're going to read just one thing. I want to show you what Abraham saw when he came into the land, okay? And what happened to him, because most people don't understand Abraham had to fight to get Lot back. Mm-hmm. But you don't know that giants were involved in Lot's capture. And I'm going to show you this, okay? Uh, read verses 1 and 2. Gen uh, Genesis 14, uh, verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel. Okay. Uh, go ahead. King of Shinar. Now, just quickly, who, who is this Amraphel, brothers and sisters? This is another name for somebody that nobody's paying attention to. This is Nimrod. This is who this is. All you gotta do is look it up. This is Nimrod here, hiding behind his name, Amraphiel, King of Shinar. Who was King of Shinar? Nimrod. Mm -hmm. This is Babylon, it went to the King of Babylon. A Babel, remember that? This is who we're reading about it. This is one of these kings right here. Go ahead. Ariok. King of Elashur. And I'm going to show you this. Ariok is a giant. I'm going to show you that. Go ahead. Chetel Lamar, Le Leomar, King of Elam, and Tidal, King of Nations, mm -hmm. that these made war with Bera, King of Sodom. Okay, because they rebelled against him and they was playing him tribute and all this, and they stopped, didn't want to, so they, they okay, we're going to make you uh, get back in line, you know, and that's what they did. So they going to war, four kings was one with five kings, or four nations was one with five nations. Go ahead. And in the midst of all this warring and fighting, you had giants in the midst of this. Go ahead. And with Bersha, King of Gomorrah, mm -hmm. This Bersha, king of the Moor, was also a giant. I'm going to show you that. Go ahead. Shinab, king of Adma, and she Shimbar, king of Zoboam. Shimbar, you read. Go ahead. Shimbar, king of Boam, mm -hmm. Zoboam, and the king of Bela, uh -huh. which is Zor. Zor. And this is the city, this Zora is the city that Lot fled to when the Lord came and destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He asked the Lord to let him uh, flee to the city right here. But anyway, uh, it was also called, by ancients, the city of Psalms. Mm. What was known as the city of Psalms? Mm. Jericho. Mm -hmm. Jericho, brothers and sisters. You gotta pay attention to what yeah. you you gotta pay attention to what you read here. You can tie a lot of things in and up and understand what you're reading about, because it's, we just don't pay attention sometimes to what we read, but you can get there if you if you really study and you can get there. You can pay attention to stuff and research it, and it, you you can find it. But anyway, we're gonna go now. And I told you two of these kings, one on each side, they were giants. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this uh, Arioch. We're gonna go back to the Genesis six giants, master builders of prehistoric and ancient civilizations. Uh, page 419, and look at this Arioch. Let's read about him. What does it say? Arioch, one of the Babylonian kings uh -huh. who joined Chedorlaomer uh, in his punishing war against Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead. And their three neighbor cities was a giant. Their three neighboring cities was a giant, it says. Go ahead. Because of his great height, he was called Arioch, which is derived from Eric, mm -hmm. Arik, and means tall among the giants. Because he was a giant, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Now we're going to stay in the same book, uh, uh, Genesis 6, Giant Master Builders of Pierce Circuit Ancient Civilization, page 4, 
421 and uh, uh, this Beersha. Uh, we're going to look at him. What does it say about him? Beersha, Gomorrah's king Beersha against who Elam's king Chedorlaomer mm -hmm. made war apparently was a giant. Based on what? Go ahead. On this basis of the Arabic Arabic language. In the Arabic language, it's gonna tell you why. Go ahead. Declares G chapter Aldars, the name Bersha, king of Gomorrah, can be interpreted as large man. This man was a giant as well, brothers and sisters. And uh we can go and read something very quickly. Uh, that wasn't the last verse. I have one more verse, one verse. But we're going to read something else right quick. Uh, we're going to stay in this book and we're going to go to page 409 and read uh, uh, between those pages 409 and 416. This is a little bit about Abraham and the giants that were in the land. He was there. Read that. Abraham and the giants, biblical and historical records, among with, along with credible archaeological evidence, mm -hmm. show that when Abraham pulled his, up his tent stakes at Ur. Ur of the Chaldeans and moved his family and flock to Canaan, Many giants already occupied Transjordan. I told you that when we started, they were there, already had set up shop, had been there for years. And they were running it. They It was their land, you know. They occupied it. Go ahead. The scriptures also say that when this first Hebrew patriarch later established his headquarters at Hebron, he lived for many years among the Anakim giants who founded that city. They built the city of Hebron, okay? It was the capital of these giants, but Abraham dwelt among them. Didn't he say that? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Although the Anakim giants in later times became the most numerous and the most feared of Canaan's giants, mm -hmm. the Avims, and Hurrians or Horites, or Horites Go ahead. as they are called in Genesis apparently were the first tall people to occupy that they land. They were all giants brothers and sisters they were all giants okay now let's go to the last verse I mean the last scripture Deuteronomy 13 I mean excuse me Deuteronomy 3 and verse 13 and uh we're looking at something here. Um, another name for the promised land was called something else. That's all I want to show you here. And um, um, it, it, we're looking at another name, ancient name, for the promised land or the Garden of Eden. Moses is talking about the dividing of the land of King Og and Sion, uh, the land of the Amorite giants, even Mount Hermon is mentioned. And it tells us something here. Uh, this is another name <coughs> for that land. Uh, when you get to the 13th verse, read that one verse. <clears throat> and the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og. This is Gilead, brother. They got songs about Gilead. Mm -hmm. And th this was the rule. The balm of Gilead. Right, the balm of Gilead. And giants built the city and dwelt in it and ruled from it. Go ahead. Gave I unto the half tribe of Manasseh, uh -huh. all the region of Argob, with all Bashan, which was called the land of giants. The land of what? Giants. The land of giants, brothers and sisters. This is what it was called in ancient times, and as time went on, people forgot that. But giants dwelt into the in that land for hundreds of years. And nobody reads about it. Nobody talks about it. It's irrelevant. But that's part of the Bible's, uh, 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 that's what's in the Bible, is it not? Mm -hmm. And it's related to you 
if you say your forefathers are these Hebrew Israelites in this Bible, this is your history and you should know about it. And we're going to go to the Dictionary of Angels, including the Fallen Angels, page 124, and we mentioned Geborah. Mm -hmm. Let's read the definition of Geborah and to confirm what that is. And if you read this, this might throw you off, but again, it's going to tell you, if you know what you're reading, you know what you're reading about and who you're reading about. Go ahead. Gibor, mighty ones. Mighty ones are these giants, or it could be in reference to their parents, depending on what you're reading about. In the context it's being used, and go ahead. An order of angels of the song utter, uttering choirs under the leadership of Tagus. And this was and was an angel, Tagus. And this is, in this sense, this part of this definition is relating to these angels, which were called Gibor. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's true. But also, their offspring were as well. Go ahead. A great angelic prince, conductor of the song uttering choir. Go ahead. They are the mighty ones, men of name. In Genesis 6, don't it give a reference for that? Mm -hmm. But who's that in Genesis 6, brothers and sisters? The giants. The giants. You gotta understand what you're reading and understand that this is this definition doesn't throw you off. You just gotta know what you're reading and put it in its in its proper text. Because this information is accurate. You can't get, you know, a negative about certain things. Oh, this isn't no. You gotta just take your time and look at what you're reading and you put it in its proper place, you'll understand what it's saying to you. Go ahead. According to the Zohar 1, 25A through B, the Gaborum erect synagogues and colleges and place in them scrolls of the law which with rich ornaments this but only to make themselves a name who did this the giants did this mm -hmm. so again when you look at this you got to understand what you read and go ahead and to make yourself a name meaning heroes mm -hmm. this is talking about <coughs> The children in this sense, go ahead, meaning the giants, the Nephilim, the Gaborim in this sense, go ahead. If that is so, then the Gaborim must be regarded as evil. And they were, go ahead. And they usually are so regarded. Okay, now we're going to go to a place, a uh, back and read the second half. Of uh, we're almost there, brothers and sisters. We got uh, two more definitions. We're gonna go back and read uh, the second half of this uh, a dictionary of the word giants in the Unger Unger's Bible Dictionary, page four hundred two. We're gonna read the bottom half of because I didn't read it all the first time we read it. Now we're gonna read the bottom half of it, and we're gonna uh, read from the one to the six because it's talking about these giants that are mentioned in the Bible. It's gonna read them all by name. So when you get there, start reading the definition of giant. Giant, an abnormally tall and powerful human being of ancient Bible lands. The rendering of several Hebrew words. Mm -hmm. One, Nephilim. Go ahead. Two, Raphim. Go ahead. So when you look at the Bible, you see Raphim, or the land of Raphim, or the valley of Raphim. We're talking about the valley of giants, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. Go ahead. The aboriginal giants who... Inhabited Canaan, Edom, Moab, and Ammon. We read about them. We was reading in the lesson mm -hmm. about they took over the lands of these giants. Mm -hmm. Well, go ahead. In Abraham's time, circa 1950 B.C., Omar defeated them. We read about that too. Go ahead. Three, Anakim, mm -hmm. Hebrew. Sons of Anak. Okay, uh, go ahead. In Numbers 13:33, the Anakim are class of the E. With the e -mim. Classed with the Emim and the Raphim on account of their gigantic size. We're talking giants, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Four, Emim, a race which inhabited the country of the Moabites. We can read about that in Genesis 14 and 5. Go ahead. And which is pictures, with its pictures as great and many and tall as the Anakim. We can read about that in Deuteronomy 2 and 11. Go ahead. 5. Zamzumim. A great giant race inhabiting the land of Ammon. We can read about that in Deuteronomy 2 and 20, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Six, 
other references from the remnant of the Anakim and Philistine Goth came the famous Goliath. We can read about that in 1 Samuel 17 and 4. Now go ahead and finish this. Yahweh was believed to have created astral as well as terrestrial beings. Uh -huh. And the former were popularly called the host of heaven or the sons of God. We're talking about angels here, aren't we not? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In Genesis 6, 1, for example, the astral God had intercourse with mortal women. So these gods, uh, astral gods, ones of heaven, they had intercourse with mortal women. Go ahead. Who gave birth to heroes. Now, who are these heroes? The giants. That's what we've been reading about. Go ahead. That's where they came from, brothers and sisters, before the flood and after the flood. You read about how they came forth. Who are their progenitors? Mm -hmm. The angels. Go ahead. Giants, titans, literally mete meteors, Nephilim. Mm -hmm. An idea that many often that may often be illustrated from Babylonian and Greek mythology. Now, mythology is not as foreign as you think it is, so this is real, okay? But anyway, continue reading and finish this. But the Israelite who had this section recited mm -hmm. unquestionably thought of intercourse between angels and women, like later Jews and Christians. A lot of people don't believe it. They don't. But it's written in the scriptures, brothers and sisters. Okay, you can doubt. It's your choice. You can believe God's word or not. Your choice. You know, I don't get mad at people when they don't believe it, but I like reading the word of God because it's refreshing and it's true and it's tangible. Something that has happened, you can find something that's going to happen. All you got to do is wait on it. And the Bible will bear it out one way or another. We're going to go to the last place. Uh, well, not the last place. There's a word, Gibar. It means uh, a mighty man, and it means hero, mm -hmm. okay, which is related to these giants. Look that up, G-I-B-B-A-R, just like a bore. Uh, we're going to go to the last place, and you have to ask yourself, and I used to ask myself this question, and Brother Josh uh, 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 shared this with me. Uh, why are these giants called heroes? I, it's simple. I didn't know it was this simple to uh, he, just look it up, and you'll see why they're called heroes. Heroes of old, men of renown, uh, and they got a name for themselves. They were heroes. You could become a hero by great feats and so forth, but also by something else. And this is that something I want to show you. Well, that's, we, we're going to a, a dictionary, the Webster's New Collegiate Dictionary, page 536, copyright 1949. When you get there, read the definition of the word hero. Hero, now plural, heroes, from the Greek Heroes. Mm -hmm. 1A, a mythological or legendary figure often of divine descent, endowed with great strength or ability. B, an illustrious warrior. So this is what makes these giants and these men of renown and of old heroes. They are simply descendants of the gods. Mm -hmm. Simple as that. And that you see in every movie that they make about heroes. And as we have read out of the Bible, is this, this mm -hmm. mythology or is this real? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you got to believe it's the Bible. real. You got to believe what's in the Bible, brothers and sisters. We've taken this and tied this all up together and showed you that stuff that we read out, we cross reference with the Bible and it confirms that the Bible is real. But it's also real too, the stuff that's not written in the Bible. Because mm -hmm. every time we went outside of the Bible, it sent you right back to the scriptures we mm -hmm. read. Mm -hmm. And it's true, and you got to believe the Bible. So, uh, like I said, brothers and sisters, they are heroes simply because they are descendants of the gods, the fallen sons of God. And just like if you go and you look at uh, uh, most people say this stuff is mythological, ain't real, and whatnot, and all of that. Well, if you look at Goliath the giant, uh, he fit this definition of hero, and and he was. Mm -hmm. He was a, a, a warrior, 
okay, a man of renown. He was famous. Mm -hmm. But he was also a descendant of the gods. Mm -hmm. This is what he was. Uh, you can look at Hercules. Mm -hmm. This is not a fictitious character, brothers and sisters. He was real. He was a giant. He was also a descendant of the gods. But he was a real character. Not a myth, some, something made up. No, this was a real giant. This was a Nephilim. This was a Gaborim. Okay? This is what he was. Then you can also look at something else people don't pay no attention to. You can look at the Cyclops. These mm. were giants. And they got an island uh, right around Italy over there. Uh, the island of Cyclops. Yeah. This is real. And giants dwelt on this particular island. And they were rulers of this island. They were real brothers and sisters. And they were giants. You know? And I, I, I wish I could share much more, but we can't do four or five hour lessons. We don't want to do that. But it's just so much information that we try to uh, impart to you and share you and show you that, hey, get the research and, and search this stuff out yourself and you can see with your own eyes by reading yourselves and researching and finding this out that this is legitimate information coming out of the Bible that connects with other historical references and books that you can find anywhere in any library, buy for any uh, place that sells books like Amazon and so forth. This is if you are, rather, a descendant of the Hebrews, this is your history you just read about. And you should not be ashamed of it. You should really go in this Bible and dig more. You're going to find way more than I've shared with you. But I hope you enjoyed this lesson and you were edified by it. And stay tuned for part two of Israel's invasion of the Promised Land. And we hope to see you again. Teresa and I would like to say good evening to you and God bless. From, from